At its peak, the Apollo space program employed over 400,000 men and women. But only 10% worked directly for NASA. The vast majority were contractors, tasked with designing and building many components of the Apollo launch vehicle, its support systems, and spacecraft. One of the largest and most important was the aerospace firm North American Aviation. With its 50,000 employees in Downey, California, North American received the contract for the most complex and crucial piece of equipment in the entire project, the Apollo Command Module. Building the machine that would get astronauts to the moon and back was no small feat, but by 1966, both NASA and the crew assigned to pilot the first command module had serious doubts North American could produce a reliable spacecraft. Their worst fears were realized when astronauts Grissom, White, and Chaffee were killed in a flash fire that swept through their command module during a routine ground test. When it was determined a spark from frayed wiring started the fire, the future of North American and the entire Apollo program appeared to be over. But NASA and North American were determined that the astronauts of Apollo 1 would not die in vain. Over the next six months, North American would carry out a complete redesign of the command module. The new and improved spacecraft was a safer, more dependable vehicle. Its fate now rested with the successful flight of Spacecraft 101, the command module that would take the first manned Apollo crew into space. When it arrived at the Kennedy Space Center in May 1968, inspectors reported fewer discrepancies than with any other spacecraft previously delivered. And when Apollo 7 splashed down after its shakedown flight, its near textbook mission helped ensure that landing on the moon before the end of the decade was still within reach. <laughs>